So yeah, my name is Thomas Grappi, and uh, like Shane was saying, I'm the senior BIM technology manager at Nexi. So I manage a team of 25, 30 uh, people uh, on Katia and Modo, and I'll talk about this and many other things. And we're based in Vancouver in Canada. Uh, so today uh, I'll talk mostly about kinetic architecture, but uh, like I said, we'll talk about a uh, few other things. Uh, my background, so for 25 years I was a technical director slash CG soup, and I had the chance to work on a feature film, television, and uh, two video games. And also I had the chance to do a soft software development at Softimage. So this is some of the projects that I had the chance to work on uh, at Rainmaker Entertainment, Electronic Arts, Softimage. Uh, the first time I saw Modo was through an ex-student of mine and now a friend, Michael Blackburn. Uh, so he was taking one of my class and he was an early beta tester, alpha tester of Modo. And yeah, he was showing me many times the software. He was very excited and I was very impressed with the render because back then I was interested in Monte Carlo ray tracing rendering. And apart from Arnold, who was a path tracer, there was not many product and it was very slow to render. Anyway, he got me really excited. One of the first images that he brought to class was this one. So I was like, oh, cool. And since I watched many uh, release of Modo, and I was like, and then he got hired as a CG soup at the Embassy VFX. And when Modo introduced animation, he started doing things like this at the Embassy. Then I was like, okay, I have to switch. So um, at version six, I think. Uh, so I also teach for Emily Carr University of Art of Design, uh, mostly in ind industrial design. But so, yeah, I put a lot of pressure, it was hard, and I switched the whole industrial design department in Modo six, seven years ago, maybe more. And now it's even more than that. Now they have all of the interaction design, so Unity, Unreal, they are all in Modo. We have the soft product department uh, with all in Modo, so actually the whole school use Modo, apart from a few animation students, and they love it. So why Modo? For me, it was the ease of use. Uh, the interface is very clean, very simple to use. Um, easy to learn. Uh, I can often get students very quickly up to speed on Modo. And once again, the quality of the render, because for design, rendering is important. So in industrial design, uh, usually uh, my students use rhinoceros, grasshopper, and SolidWorks because we have to manufacture, we have to uh, speed up blueprint uh, for you know, metal shop, wood shop, or CNC machining. And, but we need to render. And sometimes we need to do concept. So all of the rendering that we do is done in Modo. So we often import native. That was also a big difference why we went with Modo because Modo can import very large assembly uh, file from SolidWorks very easily and, and import Rhino also very easily and also Grasshopper. So that, that made a huge difference. But today my students, they also sometimes do everything in Modo if it's just concept. Uh, usually it takes me two weeks. When I say two weeks, it's two class because huh? I meet them once a week. So usually in six hours I can get students pretty fast on Modo and they love the preset. Also the, um, they love having fun. Uh, just trying, uh, I really like the preset of Modo. Like we created our own library, but even the one from the community is often we have to do very minor tweak and we can get very high end um, render. So this is after two class of Modo. So some of this is, this was fully done in Modo, but the other one it's modeled in Rhino and brought in Modo, you know, drag and drop environment, two, three material, hit render, and Bob's your own goal. Uh, same with this. Okay, we do more and more jewelry. Uh, so the jewelry, we actually uh, make them. We 3D print the wax and we cast it. This is actually 3D printed. It's uh, bronze and plastic. And the bracelet, I did this in Grasshopper. And uh, same thing, this was a three minutes model render. So very happy with the quality of the rendering. In jewelry, I found a model like just mind blowing because most jewelry students, uh, they use Rhino it's, or Matrix, it's kind of the standard, but they don't have a render. So usually it takes me 10 minutes. They walk into a class, they've never used Modo. Within 10 minutes, you know, Orbit, Zoom, Dolly, uh, open the Rhino file. Uh, here is the preset, drag and drop, get the light. Uh, they get very good render. So I'm gonna show some render, but we're done after 10th, one class, like no Photoshop. We also use, uh, one thing we love in, in Modo is the fact that they have, they have true depth of field. 
Uh, in jewelry, it's very important to have glowing effect, uh, so I can do that with the bloom. Uh, vignette edging is very good. Uh, tone mapping to reduce the saturation. So some of those rings were done after 30 minutes of Modo. Like students have never touched Modo before. Uh, now we're kinetic architecture. So kinetic means motion, so architecture in motion. Um, most building, the only pieces moving in building when you think about it is doors and windows. Uh, so what kinetic architecture is, we are adding complex mechanism, often gears, as you can tell. Often it's hand-powered. Very rarely we use hydraulic or electricity. Now they are starting to do it, but not in the past. And what we do, we demultiply. So you see that uh, thing on the top? Uh, it was in Yaletown in Vancouver. It's a bar, and it's a door. You'll see it in a few seconds moving. That open, a bit like a Tesla door, a Model X. So we only have 10 inch, 10 inch of clearance. And with that demultiplication, we can open the door. And uh, it's hand power. Same with that door. So basically, the University of Oregon, the architecture department, 10 years ago, maybe 12 years ago, came to see me in Vancouver. And they said, would you like to do a partnership where we teach uh, kinetic architecture? And, um, and we actually built uh, things. Sometimes one to the, the project, someone, uh, sometime in a scale of 101, sometime in a smaller scale. And we also made a deal with Turner Exhibit. They are in Washington, in Seattle. And Turner Exhibit is the engineering, engineering and fabricator firm of Tom Cunning, the renowned architect. And now they work with many other architects. So we made a deal with them. And uh, we use SolidWorks to uh, create the mechanism, test them. This is a grasshopper script that I wrote. And uh, then we speed up blueprint. We CNC the part, you know, go to a metal shop, which shop. The student actually built it. Then we have two engineers from uh, Turner that comes to Vancouver twice. And they looked at everything, you know, is it doable? Is it dangerous? Uh, is it going to cost too much money to do it? And then we do a simulation in Modo. So there's a, those students don't know they've, know, you know, they've done a bit of AutoCAD or Rabbit, but they, nobody has done 3D modeling or animation. So this is some of the piece you see full scale that we built. Uh, we, so we, uh, they have two weeks to learn SolidWorks, two weeks, two weeks to learn uh, Modo, and then they have three weeks where they have to go from ideation, prototype, to visualization and often 10 days to do all of the modeling, rigging, and, and animation. You really have to understand the complexity of the project. Like, I'm the only teacher there. I often don't sleep for three weeks. Uh, and it's actually mind-blowing what the student come up with. And they absolutely love Modo. Uh, before I show you the real, uh, this is some of the work of uh, Turner. So kinetic architecture often, uh, this is in Seattle, this is in British Columbia. Often it's used to move very large, you see very heavy uh, window. It's used to move the, uh, walls. Um, it can be used to hide a staircase. Uh, so once again, Turner, uh, what they do, they, they engineer and fabricate custom kinetic system. And they also review our student work. Uh, this was the first kinetic system created maybe 15 years ago by Turner and Tom Cunning. I think it's in Oregon on a lake. And this can be hand powered by a five year old. And the braking system here on the top uh, comes from an old vessel from the 1600th century. It's a very old mechanism thing. So all of this is hand powered. Here's the real. So this comes from Modo. So we bring the assembly into a model, and we animate and render it. So everything is physically correct. All of the teeth touch. It's not just a sim. And from SolidWorks, we speed out the blueprint so we can then CNC it.
Well, thank you. So once again, uh, those students you know, didn't know anything about 3D, I, I'm always very proud of them. This is done in a week. We rendered this using a huge pool of computer. You can tell it's very noisy. There's no time for refining anything. Uh, another project I had the chance to work on was last year for TED 2019 uh, for the exhibit uh, design firm called Exibo in Vancouver. Exibo is in charge of all of the TED, uh, building the, the whole convention. And they call me up and they say, would you like to work on James Cameron Ocean X uh, booth for TED? And basically, uh, they have the TED contract, but because it was Ocean X, there was many company bidding on it. And he, they told me, we're going to need a lot of TV screen. Things have to move. So we need uh, 3D animation to, uh, if we want to the, win the, the bid. But I had two days. So I was like, OK, sure, we'll do it. And I didn't get much sleep. So they give me a hand drawing, a very rough uh, hand draw. And uh, all of this, I did it. So I built very quick a uh, mock-up of the convention center, uh, you know, built quickly the screen, but they, they asked me to. All of this was drag and drop. Like uh, even this just came out of the preset from somewhere. I, I didn't even tweak anything because I had no time. And I didn't even have any time to do a play blast. And uh, I had, uh, I think I used 80 computer on our farm to render this. I gave them three shots, and you see they started building it after. They won the bid. So actually, I, I surprised myself. I didn't do it on purpose, but I actually used the default model lighting, like the default gray. I didn't even change the directional light. I just drag and drop everything. Uh, the network rendering, I was very, very impressed. I was able to use sometimes 20 computer at once in tile rendering, and uh, it was pretty stable. And the main thing that I was very impressed with is the rounded edge shader, meaning those ROV, uh, those mini submarines are from SolidWorks. So I could bring them in without any fillet, because it would have been way too heavy. And I could do the filleting, the rounded edge at render time. So you see, I, I, I've got a huge library that I built. And it's on my Dropbox. And on any computer, I could just, just drag and drop things. So this is one of the shots I render. Like I said, no play blast. I just set up two keyframes on the camera and press render. And that was enough for them to win the bid. This is some shot from uh, BBC uh, Blue Planet, because Ocean X produced this uh, TV show. So I was very impressed with Modo, because I could really quickly send them those three shots. Uh, not perfect, but enough for them to win the bid. Lastly, my current job was very new. It's been three months, I think. Uh, so Nexi. Uh, so at Nexi, we are a building technology company. We manufacture and build whole building system. And we manufacture off-site sustainable walls, roof, flooring. Uh, we are a complete construction company. And we have a, a in-house proprietary lightweight composite. Um, and our pipeline is based on Katia uh, from Dassault. So we use Katia to uh, speed out all of the blueprint to our manufacturing plant so they can build those walls. And we use Modo for rendering. So this is some of my team's work in Katia. So uh, we build those walls. You know, uh, we have room for routing, the piping, the electrical. Uh, those rooms are fully green. Those walls are fully green, fireproof, uh, fire uh, water resistant. Like they are um, very interesting wall assembly, assembly in Katia. Uh, we have our own connecting system, and this is one of the, Ben, one of the owner of Nexi and inventor of that Nexi product. And this is one of our factory where we project some of those um, DWG line. And uh, then we have people uh, layering all of the, all of the components of the composite. And then we can uh, assemble on site. You see the, the building. We can assemble a house in one day. And we use Modo uh, to create all of our training, assembly, and visual uh, content. So we bring the Katia file into Modo. And to conclude this speech, um, we use technology from aerospace or automotive, such as Katia. Uh, technology used by Boeing, Airbus, Tesla. And we use it in construction to, uh, 
to, uh, to create the bill of material, to create all of our assembly of our wall, the sandwiching. And we use technology from movies, such as Modo, in construction in the AAC sector. And uh, my tech for the future of 3D, I think, in, in this industry, is that software will be easier and easier to use, and they will be more and more compatible with each other. Like, I really love how easy Modo can open SolidWorks and Rhino and even Katia 5. Thank you very much, and thanks to Foundry. Thank you.